Hello. Reese here from the Point Music News podcast thingy with a new one. Um, reaching out into the depths of Brisbane via Melbourne via UK. Uh, this one, we've got special guests, Brixton Alley. We've got Ben. we got Johnny. we got Alex. Um, man, those guys have had a journey. And they came to the country and started playing in Melbourne just before lockdown. But they managed to get up here. So they are playing up here in... I think, uh, I think next week um, at Scrapyard. So um, big shout out to Darty for putting on, keeping on with Scrapyard. So I caught up with them because I wanted to chat to them because they're cool dudes. So ladies and gentlemen, Brixton Alley. And we're ready to go. Hello, Brixton Alley. Hello, hello, hello. How are we? Good, thanks, mate. So, How are you? I'm pretty, I'm pretty knackered, actually. It's been a big, big week. Um, so we'll do a roll call. we got Ben on screen left. we got Johnny in the middle. We've got Alex on the right. Which one's the bass player? Hey guys. Who's the bass Me. player? Hey. All right, so we're, we're, we're brothers, man. You, you score points. <laughs> Should we just leave now? Should yeah, yeah. Just it's going to be a bass player loving. That's all it is. Cool. <laughs> yeah. So um, we'll get straight to the chase. What the fuck are you guys doing in this country? <laughs> oh well, uh, they asked us out of the border, mate. It's turned it's turned into a bit of a twisted story. It wasn't supposed to be as complicated as it's turned out to be, but um, we came over to Oz last year um, and we did a couple of shows. We did Melbourne. Mm. Uh, we came to Gold Coast and we spent some time in Brisbane just before we went home. Um, and it was great. We loved it. We got great reception from. People at our shows, our music seemed to do really well over here, and just the kind of scene in general, I think, was really fitting with kind of what we wanted to do. Mm. Um, so by the by the time we were ready to leave, we were kind of thinking, oh, it's a shame that we've got to go. Mm. We should make an effort to come back if we can. And uh, this was in September last year, so within a couple of months, we decided to just pack up our jobs and move everything over to Australia. So we came over in January to Melbourne um, <laughs> and kind of hit the ground running, uh, did a load of gigs. Um, again, it was great, just as we expected it would be. Yep. Uh, played some awesome venues, met loads of cool people. Um, and then obviously March, everything kind of locked down because of COVID. Yep. Uh, so we spent pretty much since March up until uh October, yeah, at the start yeah. of October, um, sort of in our apartments uh, in Melbourne, thinking, oh, next month might be the month we can get back out and start again. Something's going to happen at some point. But it just went on and on and on. Yeah. Uh, so eventually, um, we thought, you know, let's go to Queensland. We managed yeah. to get into Brisbane, did the two week hotel quarantine mm-hmm. thing. Yeah. Um, and yeah, we've been here for about so four weeks now. We've been free. Mm-hmm. Yeah, four weeks since we've been free from the hotel and yeah everything's been great again people that we've met shows we've played um fantastic it's kind of funny if you talk to a lot of people from like sunny coast or brisbane is that most of the musos actually moved to melbourne and you guys done the exact yeah, opposite a lot of people have mentioned that too, actually. yeah it's um, but they don't realize that brisbane scene's actually like really pumping at the moment so and sunny coast really sunny coast is pretty consistent and it's gonna get better so um, keep an eye yeah, on this yeah. shit. There's some cool looking venues popping out. There's like a new one. What was it called? Is it Night Quarter? Night Quarter. Yeah. Time? Yeah. It, that looks awesome. You didn't? Ha- you haven't checked it out yet? No. Uh, I did, did. Did they have like an opening party at the weekend? Yeah. Right? That was. It was sold out. I went to the the media launch thing on the Friday afternoon to check it out. But it, it, oh, it's cool. actually been moved from. It was originally in Helensvale on Gold Coast, and okay. they lost their. There was a long story. But basically, um, they moved it from there to where it is now in Batinia. Yeah. Um, but it was supposed to have opened last year. But then there was yeah, like, yeah. bad weather and all this sort of stuff. And then fucking COVID happened. And because yeah. like Barefoot was supposed to play the opening night, we, we were booked to do yeah. this. Yeah. Oh, right. So, yeah, a bit yeah, of a bummer there. But, um, yeah, they're up and running. It's it, You guys need to check it out because you'll love the stage. The stage set up there. They look really cool. We'll definitely get down yeah. there. So well, we down. came up to, um, because we've got a gig at the scrapyard in a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah, so we yeah. played, 
we came up the other week and played at the um, Soul Bar. At Soul Bar, the open mic. Yep. And we didn't really know what to expect. We were <laughs> like, we'll turn up. Like, it's on a, you know, it was a Wednesday night. Yep. It was super quiet. Yep. And we were just sitting there having something to eat. And a few musicians started turning up. More musicians started turning up. We went in to go and put our name on. And, and we could either go like first or, or eight. Last. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's the soul bar open mic for you, mate. Yeah, we were like, okay, so, fuck it, we'll just go first. Yeah. And then I've never seen an open mic busier in my life. By yeah. the, like, yep. so good. by like 10 o'clock, there was about 100, over 100 people in there. Yeah. It was packed. It was yeah. just fantastic. And like the sound, the venue, and you, you wouldn't even expect for that stage and that setup to be in there walking off the street just into the bar yeah, yeah. Uh, initially it was just it was an awesome night they did such a good job there uh, you know from the sound to all the stuff that they've, they've got working there it's a really good really good um vibe that's going on that's actually an interesting perception that you got there because like well mainly because i've barefoot was born in solbar basically so but oh, yeah. not that one it was there was one across the road um and it was a smaller yeah. venue and then basically we we we, pl- we got together at open, open mic and oh, okay. Okay basically it was was just three of us it was me asher and sean so asher the singer and sean the drummer and um there's a a long story behind it's pretty funny but we won't go into this one um i have a chat to you about it some other time but yeah it basically the sound sound engineer there brian at the time basically said you guys are stupid you should form a band and next thing you know we're supporting matt McHugh from the beautiful girls and then we became a four piece and a five piece and a six piece so yeah (laughs) <laughs> just keep growing yeah 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 but um it's interesting that you guys said that about Solbar because like we don't we don't see it that way we just know instinctually there's there's mm. a big room out the back and you just go in there and you yeah play. yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, that's cool really cool yeah, it's, it's kind of cool. funny that you had that open mic experience and yeah it, you're not the only person to actually just go shit you either go first or last because everyone all, all the regulars yeah yeah, yeah 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 we yeah. bit the bullet we had a, we had to drive back to Brisbane that night, so yeah. it was like, well, go first. This rate will be at two o'clock in the morning, so we should probably <laughs> get on. <laughs> yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, so, um, okay, so here's the here's the thing. Like, I've listened to your stuff, and mm-hmm. I was trying to figure out what like, why you guys would be into barefoot because when I first when I my first taste of you guys was a bit punkier than normal. But going back into the Animals EP, I, then I clicked as to you guys have got a bit of a like, um, uh, early clash coming into it. That there's there is a slight reggae ish feel that it's going on in there because I thought you were just basically yeah. sort of more punk indie than that. No, I, I don't. Know. I mean, maybe it comes from. I think it probably comes from the music we grew up listening to. Yeah. Uh, we we love bands like Sublime. Yep. You know, a Big that. Fish, yep. like, with like ska and reggae and stuff. And although it doesn't directly influence us in terms, you know, we don't have like a brass section or anything like that. But we do use quite a bit of offbeat in mm-hmm. our songs and you know things like that. So there's certainly elements from that sort of thing. And then the sung rap as well that johnny does you know that comes i guess from from hip-hop really but then also that kind of like reggae dub i guess yeah yeah like start so yeah they like when we heard barefoot we were just like you guys are wicked <laughs> <laughs> any band with more than like four members gets our thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. it's not fun touring man it gets a bit squishy <laughs> but what, what... yeah i bet you feel I found it difficult on a couple of stages in your time. Uh, well, the, the, you, you've seen that Soul Bar front stage in the front room? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. we've, we've played on that. Yeah. Like, so. <laughs> I didn't even realize that on the stage. Yeah, we all fit. We all fit. It's, it's pretty squishy. <laughs> we all fit. Like, we, we normally yeah. stick Sully somewhere in the corner or something like that on the trumpet yeah. there because he <laughs> doesn't really need mic that. Um what I was going to say is that when I did listen to it and some of the stuff clicked, and I don't want you to take this the wrong way because you may be offended by it, but it's kind of like a cross between Kasabian and um, 21 Pilots. Oh, and that's cool. Okay. That's new. Yeah. yeah. We yeah. haven't heard that before. We always get loads of different, like, um, the most common are kind of Arctic Monkeys, and then you get like Red Hot Chili Peppers, and then quite a good one I heard the other day was Kooks mixed with Sticky Fingers. Oh yeah, I could see uh, that. But Sticky got a real big um, British influence anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Dylan just wants to be Oasis so bad. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'll take yeah. 21 pilots. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Yeah. That's interesting because some people just go. Yeah, that's cool. Ah, um, nah, good. so how have you found the transition? Have you found the transition? From being over, because the UK's, I've, I've toured the UK before, um, like, a, mm. fuck, well, 2012, I was over there with another band that's no longer together now, uh, but still yeah. reggae, reggae funk kind of stuff, reggae funk dub, and we play yeah. through mainly the Midlands, um, and, and yeah, 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 that makes sense, home of UB40, I suppose. Yeah, well, we played sure. the Lang, um, Lancaster Music Music Festival, so we, we had Oh, cool, fun. So we spent most of the time in Lancashire and just hanging around there. And then we got told yeah, by a couple yeah. of um, lads from Manchester that we should come down and see them there, but we didn't get a chance to do it. But yeah, um, yeah. it was just it was just interesting getting because the scene over there, as much there are similarities, there are a lot of differences there compared to here. I mean, what would you definitely point out the most? I think nowadays it's uh, it, there's a lot over here. People love live music yeah um yeah. it seems like people go out of their way to watch live music whereas at home it's not like that so much mm. it's uh it, it is and it isn't like there there are some places that still have you know a good live music scene but the majority of people are more it's more urban and it's turning more and more urban and i think it's probably about time that it's it's probably got to that time where it might you know go back into band music but um yeah, it's, it up here. Just it's just great. Like and uh, being in Australia, and then everybody's just, is up for a party all the time. Ooh. Up for a dance. Up for well, when you can. Um, <laughs> but you know, love, love good. Like seem to just love live music, which is just what we live for. So Ooh. I think as well the community that we found over here, we saw it a bit in Melbourne, but like coming up here has just been amazing. Really, like we we basically came up with no shows books when we went into hotel quarantine we had nothing yeah and within two weeks we booked like 13 shows and now we've got a gig basically a week up until the end of the year the end of the year and that's all through chatting to bands chatting to venues you know you go to one place and someone's like oh you know you should check out these guys and give them a shout and then you know speak to this person speak to this person yeah and it's just so good Mm. Uh, i think you just don't really get that at home Mm. Um, yeah, everyone, people. everyone seems just to be in it to help everyone here. Um, you know, whether it's a contact or a recommendation for a venue or bands that you might work well with. You know, everyone seems to go out of their way, and they do it. They do it at home, but I think it's just very different here, and it's just more apparent here, uh, especially in our situation. That's what we found, anyway. Mm. I mean, you probably have that novelty because of the fact that you guys are from from another country, basically. Um, yeah, it probably helps. And they probably just go, oh yeah, we've got a British band coming in. Yeah, even though you guys basically yeah. live here now, um, yeah, because you, you play we'll right, we'll right, right on that for the whole time yeah. that we're here. <laughs> yeah, ten, yeah. ten years before, we'll still be like, look, yeah. we're we're fresh, we're fresh, fresh off the boat, fresh off the Reece, boat. You can't say that, mate. Don't let anyone know that we're, actually we're, we're <laughs> yeah. trading on the fact that we're the only international artist in Queensland. At the moment. <laughs> <laughs> it's that's actually going to be a winner for you, yeah. Wait, yeah, that's funny. Yeah, it's a blessing in disguise. Yeah. Um, being from okay. because you got have you guys played Mo's yet? Because you played, were you have you played that? Yeah, yeah. All right, so you've done Greaser Bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. got we, Woolly Mammoth coming up in a couple of weeks. Yeah, because yeah, 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 my other We've band barbecue and bar. Ah, see, yeah, okay. So I'm in three bands, just so you know. Um. <laughs> One of my bands was supposed to play with you guys at the Woolly Mammoth, but we we just can't do it because we've actually um, lost our drummer. We left him behind. So oh, like, I know. Nah. Um, so we basically had to put a nix on that. We've got one show left, and that's in December, but we've got a filling drummer for that. And my other band, when, when's your Barbecue Bazaar date? 21st, oh, I okay. think. Yeah, 21st. Yeah. yeah, week on Saturday. All right. So the other the other band I'm in is actually um, playing at Barbecue Bazaar in December. So yeah, wow, crossing over and mixing, yeah. missing each other. Yeah, um, we played Vinny's the other night. You ah, yeah, yeah. The, the long skinny oh, room. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, that place Love is so it. cool. Yeah, that place is awesome. So good. Yeah, it's a good dive bar that one. So good. They're such nice guys there. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah it's, it's great. Awesome. You walk in, just all the like, all the posters on the wall and stuff. Like, it's very cool. Mm. Yeah, 
Did you what? Did you play on a Friday or a Saturday? It was Saturday, Saturday, Saturday night. night. Yeah, it was really last minute. They basically, yeah, uh, Glenn, the guy there, got hold of us like two days before. It was like, look, do you fancy a gig this weekend? And we happened to be coming down because we've been we're in the studio all week mm-hmm. this week, and then we've got a gig at the weekend. So we just thought, oh yeah, uh, let's add an extra day on and go down and play this show on Saturday. So we did that, which was pretty cool. Yeah. And one thing you lucky bastards are getting to do is apparently you're playing the zoo. Is that oh, right? no. Oh, no. No? No, we win. We unless, you, unless, unless you know something we don't. Yeah, I yeah. thought you were playing the zoo. No, no. no. We, we wish we were. Yeah. What's the one on December 4th then? The the one that you're supposed to be, uh, your single launch, is that? Oh, right. We've got through the zoo, but it's like it's some separate like creative space thing. Ah, uh, right. I was yeah, gonna say, yeah, yeah. lucky bastards can play the zoo, and a lot of us are sitting there just waiting for ages to get on there. And we're going, mm-hmm. Oh yeah, no, oh, we right. um, yeah, we spoke to the guys there. They were super nice, but they were just like, yeah, we're booked up in a minute. But they offered us this really cool. It's like it's basically like a bespoke creative space that you yep. can kind of just do what you want with. It yep. has a bar there, so we're putting on um, like an exclusive little. We've got a single coming out the following week, so the show is on the fourth of December. Yeah. So we're just having an exclusive like pre-single party so we'll kind of debut the single there um we're going to do some merchandise for people to get with their tickets and stuff so some a few freebies and a few beers it should be pretty cool so if you're around and in brisbane i know it's a bit of a trek for you but it'd be uh cool to see you down there here's the thing us australians don't mind driving an hour (laughs) <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. that's the other thing. They straight for us from the UK, bloody country. If yep. it's twenty minutes, it's an hour. I know, it's it's people when... here drive an hour and a half to go to the supermarket. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I remember being uh, in Lancaster itself, and we're on the top of the town, staying in the hotel there, and I heard about this jazz club, this wicked jazz club, with all these legendary sort of older musicians were playing. And I yeah. said, how, how do they get there? And I said, well, you got to go down the street here and then you get to the McDonald's, you turn right and then you got to go down this alley here. And I said, you need to catch a cab. And I went, I've walked through town. I know that's a little five minute walk. Why would I need to catch a cab? <laughs> oh, it's a long way to go. It's, so it's not. We're so lazy. <laughs> but yeah, so lazy. We, we're used yeah. to driving for like an, an hour. For, man, like my, my one of my band's mules, we, we, we don't, we hardly play here on the coast. We, Playing Brisbane most of the time, so it's standard for us to drive an hour now. Oh, you were in Brisbane? Yep. We were talking the other day. Yep. That was me that we were chatting on Instagram. That, that was, was you chatting. That was me. I'm in charge of that sort of shit. Uh, fingers in so many pies, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I'm everywhere. I never used to be, but I'm way too busy now. That's the thing. Is there a band in Queensland you're not in? Are you in Brixton Alley? Is this? No. Yeah. 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 Yes, ben, Ben's, Ben's, Ben's just miming my parts, man. He's just like, I've yeah. Been yeah. Else, so. It's all backtracks. Well, it's if, all my plan. If you think you're coming down on the 4th, it'd be great to see. In fact, anyone you know that catches this and wants to come check us out in Brisbane on the 4th, on our Instagram page, on the Bricks and Alley Instagram page, the link's in our bio to buy tickets. So I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. put the link in, in the description anyway, Johnny. Oh, yeah. Thanks, mate. So, yeah, it's, it's all good. I'll be playing the night after that. So I'll be playing Flaming Galar on the on the fifth. It's a, oh yeah, you said about that. I really, really want to come and because I'd love to see what the Flaming Galar is like. It's, it looks it's, really cool. It's an interesting venue, apart from the fact that it's in a really difficult position. Oh really? Okay. Um, luckily, there's not a fucking football game playing at the same time this time because when ever, <laughs> oh, it's in it's in Upper Roma Street, so it's not that far from Suncorp Stadium. If you know where Suncorp Stadium is. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So basically, there is no on-site parking. The venue is on the street. You park in the loading zone, you unload, and then you go park somewhere like the barracks, which is just off Caxton Street. Um, yeah. And I had that plan, but the last time I played there a couple of weeks ago it was a semi-final with Melbourne Storm and Bloody Raiders, and there was not a. Oh, I, yeah. I had to park about a k and a half away and, and walk. So <laughs> yeah, that was <laughs> fucked. But this time around, you know it's yeah, it's summer then, so there's no football, so yeah. it'd be fine. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's it's yeah. a good, it's a fun venue. It's it's got like a little mezzanine thing at the top. Um, they oh, cool. uh, have a pretty good sound there. Um, it's it's it's, it's gone a great through. Name for that. Cool. It's very Alf Stewart. Oh, yeah. cool. <laughs> from home and away. Yeah, from home and away. Yeah, flame and glow. Yeah. <laughs> um, good. Yeah, if I can get down there, because, yeah. 
That's the night before. We'll see how I go. I want, I'll do. Yeah, I, if yeah, not, yeah. I'll be catching it. When's the scrapyard gig? Frozen. Frozen connection. Oh, no. oh hey, yep, gotcha. Oh, yeah. Yay, you froze. Oh, yeah. When's when's the scrapyard game? Oh, it's on the twentieth of November. Oh god damn it. Yeah, can't do it. <laughs> <laughs> my other band. Yeah, my other band. <laughs> um, we actually my my other band was actually supposed to be playing that one with you as well. But uh, yeah, we can't do it. Um, yeah, I'm not about. Oh, no way. You guys are literally playing like a two minute drive from my place on that night, so yeah. I could do a quick drive by and go, hey, and then basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's it. We'll sling you a beer. Yeah, <laughs> pretty normal. <laughs> so, just um, cold. Yeah. <laughs> you guys were gracious enough to send me through a, a bit of a demo of what you've been working on too, and that's that's why. Yeah. I got a little bit confused when I was listening to that compared to your older stuff because this stuff is a little bit, mm, yeah. a little bit more abrasive, which is cool. I like abrasiveness. I like that kind of shit. Yeah. yeah so actually, funny enough, we've come a bit full circle. So that last EP that we released in February, mm. well, yeah, it came out February, didn't it? Yeah. Um, that was a bit of a different kind of tangent for us, a bit more rocky and that sort of stuff. But if you go way back to like our older, older stuff, that was a bit more scrappy and punky. So we've kind of gone back to that. And I think it's probably something to do with the Australian influence. Yeah. Uh, that kind of party vibe and that mm. like thrashy, punky, upbeat stuff seems to go pretty well over here. We've been listening to a lot of it and mm. been around a lot of it. And it's, it's rubbed off. We haven't quite got the accents yet, yeah. but don't, the music you don't, is... You don't need it. You don't need it. <laughs> have, you, have, you dis- um, have you discovered yeah. the Bennies yet? Bennies? What's no. that? Oh my god! All right, you guys need to after this. I'll, I'll, I'll. We'll have a chat after the recording thing, and I'll, um, I'll, um, show you some bennies. Bennies will be right up your goddamn alley. I can tell you that now. Okay, right up our Brixton alley. Eh? Oh, right up the Brixton <laughs> alley. Um, so I'm, oh, I'm assuming you guys are actually from far. Brixton itself, right? No, no. no. So why the name? I've actually never. Been. Are you actually not? I don't think so. <laughs> never been to Brixton. No. <laughs> <laughs> We're fraud. <laughs> <laughs> it came yeah. from a song. Yeah. It was actually one of the first songs we wrote called okay. um, Simple Sally, about, uh, a prostitute, a lady of the night. Yep. And she stands down Brixton Alley huh. and waits for a, or a guy waits for a down Brixton Alley. And we didn't what have a cool. client. We didn't have a name, so we just took a line from that song. We were like, oh, Brixton Alley would be cool. Because we had gigs, I had, had like a couple of gigs books, so we were like, but well, we need a name. Yeah. So we just clucked. It just kind of stuck. I, I hate doing the whole generic where the name come from thing. I really do because I'm not the top of music journalist that journalist that does that. But I was just curious. So where are you guys actually from in the UK then? Uh, in the Midlands. Okay. So a place called Bracey near Stratford upon Avon. Yep. Shakespeare. Yeah. William Shakespeare's birthplace. Yeah. Pretty much. <sighs> that place is actually ringing a bell because I've got to go through the tour dates of when I played in 2012. Well, if you're a Midlands way, you probably, I mean, it's probably like an hour from Birmingham. Yeah. Because I know we played, we played Bath. We played, yeah. um, uh, Ulverston. Um, uh, we, we stayed in a small village called Atworth, which is not that far from Box. Like literally. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I, don't think that's, I don't think that's too close to where we are. Yeah, but that the name you mentioned then actually rings a bell because we, like I said, we did a big loop. Yeah, yeah. And we did play a lot of gigs, man. There was a lot of drunkenness though, so I can't drink. I can't drink. Yeah. I can't drink the British beer though. That's that's the shit thing. I, I just couldn't do it. Oh, uh, what what kind? What like what's your tipple? tipple? What's your tipple of choice though? Well, I had to. I wanted to because my 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 dad's a pom. He's he's from Yorkshire, so I, I really wanted to oh, basically okay. ad- adopt all that sort of stuff. But it actually messed with my guts when I was there. I um, oh, I, just, yeah. I, couldn't it nails nails. I think it was yeah. the water. Yeah. I don't know, but I was since I drank Heineken, I was fine. I was like, oh god, I got to stick to drinking Heineken in a place where I don't want to be yeah. drinking Heineken. Yeah, I mean that's what that's what most people in the UK do anyway. Is just drink European lager. So yeah, you're not sure. alone. Well, that's pretty weak. But then you then at the same time is like saying that yeah the Foster's crap which is actually Crown 
a lot of people don't realize that it's actually a crown lager it's the same shit you didn't know that because you know you we don't have no. fosters in australia right yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Brewed in Manchester in the, in the UK. Yeah, we actually used to have Fosters here in the 80s. Yeah. And then it's disappeared. But it's basically the same as Crown Lager over there, um, here. So, so it's actually okay. Oh, okay. It's nothing fancy. Oh. Um, anyway, going back to the... Sorry to digress. Um, so you, you've, you've, you're currently recording, but where are you recording at? Studio Circuit. Studio Circuit yeah. in Burley. Yep. Uh, so we've been there. I'll be there all this week. Um, and we've, we've got some songs that sounded pretty good. Um, one of the tracks, This Party Sucks, it's called. That's the one that we're going to be um, doing a premiere of on the 4th of December. Mm. Um, so, yeah, we've just been working on those. They're sounding good. So we're really looking forward to release them getting up getting them out there and seeing what people think really yeah I dug we're recording it. with uh, brock who is the drummer for bugs yep so, yeah so, so that's been really cool mm. he's a really cool guy Hi, yeah. brock. Very fun watching. <laughs> there's actually <laughs> quite a quite a few sort of producers that are in bands that are down your way as well because i know um uh what's his name can't remember the name of the actual studio now, but Luke Luke Palmer is down there. He's um one of the guitarists in Dead Letter Circus. So he's oh, cool, cool. Um, because he's down that way. There's also um yeah. Love Studios. Is it Love Studios? Which is Cheap Fakes. Um it's Scotty French. So I don't know. Uh-huh. I don't know if you've discovered Cheap Fakes yet. No. Oh yeah, no. Okay, so they're um how do you explain? Because the first, my first introduction to them was more like ska, reggae kind of stuff with a bit of dub mixed in there. But they they go all over the place. They do like, um, they do their take on the Pop Fiction soundtrack, which is quite popular. Okay. Oh, cool. They're 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 in between Gold Coast and Brisbane, but they're, um, Scotty French is down Goldie Way, and he's actually got a studio down there too. Yeah. There's actually quite That's a few it. studios down that way. Yeah, the studios um, was is amazing that we're in. Yeah, um, so cool. You know. It's- it's brilliant it's one of the you know probably one of the best that we've been in um but yeah it's just been a really cool experience and it's been good to get the tracks down um which are kind of a bit different we, we wrote them whilst in lockdown so ah. they are a bit a bit more you know trashy <laughs> um kind of just bred from like a frustrated um mindset really i guess so it's really cool um to have been able to put those down so that's the thing I've discovered with a lot of artists that have been writing during this whole COVID shit and mm. they've changed style or they've experimented with different things. And it's actually, I've actually been welcoming it because I wanted to see a change of direction. Um, mm. uh, cause, cause I've been in this industry for fuck, 20, 26 years or something like that now mm. when it first hit, it was like pressing a massive pause button on anxiety and this whole industry because it's constantly going. Yeah. I don't know what it's like in the UK when it comes to that, but here, I mean, you've got, you have to appease the triple J gods if you want to go anywhere, basically, um, which is the only country yeah. in the world that actually has that kind of power and influence, if you understand what I mean, with, mm-hmm. with being the main radio station in the country. Um, yeah, yeah. And playing keep catch ups with basically everyone else and seeing and then being told you're not doing the right thing the other you got to do it that way and basically when mm. COVID hit and it was a big pause button on there, I know that speaking from my experience it was like deep breath out, I can just fucking sit back and take my time now. I taught myself how to mix shit. I taught my, taught myself how to because I'm producing Mules's album right now. So it basically it. It actually was welcoming, and I know a lot of musicians utilize that to create shit. Mm. Yeah, it definitely has been good to have the time, I guess, to to be able to focus on that. Mm. Um, I think too much time is is another thing. Yeah, <laughs> you know, it's sometimes difficult to find things to keep you busy. But so, yeah, certainly for these these tracks that we've that we've been working on, having that time. 
you know, in one way, it's actually been a blessing that we've been able to kind of step away from everything and sort of assess everything and look mm, at it from, yeah. you know, a, a different perspective than, like you say, when in the normal world you're just going hell for leather every week with, you know, shows and different things. And there's, you don't really get the break from it that we've been able to get yeah. for the last couple of months. Yeah, and you know, I mean, it's been pretty good for me. I actually taught myself to play drums, so <laughs> I can be off with some youth, which is a bonus for everybody, I think. Yeah. Give me plenty of time to write the tracks, the bass tracks to send through to Ben, so you can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah cheers for them, mate. Yeah. Okay. It's all good, man. It's all good. Yeah. Well, that was really good. Stick your invoice in the post, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's coming. Don't you worry. <laughs> but is that uh, all right? So. What would you have experienced in Melbourne? Because Melbourne, for us, was at one stage was basically in Australia was music mecca. Okay, so as I was saying yeah. earlier, a lot of us would actually move down there. I've toured there numerous times. It's it's basically if you're up here and you say you're a musician, some people go, "Oh yeah, that's cool." You go to Melbourne and you go, "I'm a musician." And they go, "Yeah, so it's fucking the other hundred thousand people that are hanging around here." Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, Whereabouts in Melbourne did you basically start playing, and and what was your experiences down there like? Well, you we were playing. We were playing all over, really. Yeah. Um, I guess mainly it was kind of Brunswick, yep. Fitzroy, wasn't yeah. it? Really? Yeah. So um, you bar, like bar open and that sort of shit. Yeah, yeah. yeah we played Stay Gold, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We had a little gig at the Gasso. Yeah, um, especially when we, when we first got here as well. Being, you know, so fresh, it was kind of just let's see what's around and play as many, many venues as we can. But yeah, those those kind of venues are the ones that we hit kind of straight off the bat. Did you play yeah. a The last lounge? gig we played... No, 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 we didn't. No, we didn't. Mm. We basically, we, we hit the ground running, similar to how we have here. What did we play? It was like 10 or 11 shows in about six weeks or something. Mm. And then that culminated in us having an EP launch party at the SB yep. on the 12th of March. And then the 13th of March, Melbourne lockdown. <laughs> and that was it. So the, all our shows were cancelled. But um, yeah, I think it was like, it was a good experience. In some ways, it was similar-ish to London in the fact mm. that there's a lot of competition. Yeah. And you have to work a lot harder. And certainly being an up-and-coming band or like a new band on the scene is pretty difficult. Like, you know, mm. down there, I think the, one of the main differences is like between down there and up here like just something so basic is just turning up to a venue and there being a backline. Yeah. Like there's no backline at any venue in Melbourne. You have to take your own backline. You <laughs> half the time have to take a sound engineer. Yeah. You, you know, sometimes you even have to a venue hire. You also have to book all your own support acts, which when you turn up in a city and you don't know anybody, yeah. Is actually like, you know, it's, it makes it quite difficult. <laughs> yeah. So, like people to play with. And we, we were fortunate. We met some really great other bands who mm. helped us out and, you know, um, and so we've got some really good friends back there. And we're really looking forward to eventually getting back down there and playing some shows. But mm. certainly coming up here, it's just been like a bit of a breath of fresh air, really. Things yeah. are much more relaxed. But, you know, even like, and it, it, it's certainly, there's less pressure when I think you're booking a gig. You know, you know that the venue have done a good job of promoting it. They've selected the support acts. They've actually bothered to listen to you. Yeah. You know, there's a back line there. You can kind of rock up, you relax, and you can just focus on having a really good show. Yeah. Um, and I think we've all probably appreciated that coming up mm. here. Um, and it's made the first few weeks are like, really, really enjoyable for us, which is good. Mm. Well, welcome, basically. Yeah. It's a bit more chilled up here than down in Melbourne and better weather. Yeah. I can tell you that right now. Yeah. Well, we're we're about a hundred yards away from the beach. Yeah. Where we're staying at the moment, so it's just oh, it's a dream. absolute dream to just go and grab a coffee in the morning and you know go down to the beach before you start your day. Oh, it's just yeah, it's nice. That's that's the tradie life, man. That's when you, when you see all the tradies yeah. doing half the time. Well, they they normally not. Yeah. You'll see it as, as soon as the surf is pumping. There'll be no tradies working. They'll be out in the surf basically. Uh, yeah. Shit yeah, day for the job. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, we'll wrap this one up because um, we're just going over half an hour. I usually try and keep it around half an hour to forty minutes, but yeah. I've, oh, I am keen to. See, I actually want to play with you guys, and I've actually said that. I think I've said that to you, Alex. Be keen to do it. Yeah, hundred percent. 
Well, hopefully this running theme that you've got going, where every time we've got a gig, yeah, we, we you probably are yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you guys have got gigs all the way up to the end of the year, so I'm surely I'll be able to catch you at some fucking point. All right, so. Well, we can't be at the same time, mate. It's not going to work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll have to get my ass down to Brisbane a bit more often. All right, yeah. I'll wrap this up now. I'll chat to you once. Um, well, um, I'll finish up here. So yeah. stay on the line that. Ben, Johnny, Alex, Brixton, Ali, you guys are awesome. Thanks for jumping on. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Brixton and Ali, and thank you for watching this episode. Um, if you have enjoyed this episode and other ones in the series and still haven't done it yet, you've got to go over here and press that subscribe button. It means a lot. It means that you're actually going to be notified when a new episode and there's going to be another one tomorrow so there'll be more episodes coming your way thank you for supporting local music live music australian music and um uk music as well um big help massive love cheers